Welcome to the Embracing Intensity podcast. I'll be sharing interviews and tips for gifted, creative, twice exceptional, and outside the box thinkers who use their fire in a positive way. My name is Aurora Remember Holtzman. After years of feeling too much, I finally realized that intensity is the source of my greatest power. Now, instead of beating myself up about not measuring up to my own self-imposed standards, I'm on a mission to help people embrace their own intensity and befriend their brains so they can share their gifts with the world through the Embracing Intensity community, coaching, educational assessment, and other tools to help use your fire without getting burned. You can join us at embracingintensity.com. Hello. So today I would like to talk about getting an assessment as a gifted or twice exceptional adult. And this post has been a really long time in coming. I've been thinking about this post for probably months because over the years, first assessing students and more recently assessing adults, There have been a lot of themes that have come up and various people have talked to me about their own personal experiences. And I thought it would be really helpful to kind of share some of my thoughts about things that you should think about when you're going to pursue an assessment. And the fact that all assessments have various aspects that are really potentially useful and informational. And also there's limitations for each one. And all assessments have their strengths and limitations. So I thought it would be helpful to kind of go through an overview of different types of assessments and what kind of information you might find and some things to consider if you're going to pursue that type of assessment. So before I get started, there's a couple of things that are generally universal about getting an assessment as adult. First of all, if you think you're gifted, you're probably gifted. Gifted people have imposter syndrome quite often, and you are much more likely to actually be gifted and doubt that you are than to think you might be gifted and not really be. Statistically speaking, you probably are gifted if you think so. And on the podcast Unleash Monday with the episode with Paula Prober, Nadia, the host, asked her, how often do people come to you who think they're gifted and are not? And she said, none. And that's essentially the experience that I've had as well. If someone thinks they're gifted, they're probably gifted. And they might not score a certain number on a certain test, but every test has its limitations. And so it might not be quite catching what it is that makes that person gifted. So that's something important to understand about all assessments. And if you are going to get any kind of assessment, you really, really want to make sure that the person who's doing the evaluation has familiarity with giftedness and twice exceptionality. Because a lot of people who don't are going to look at scores and they might look at things that aren't that low and just dismiss them because they're within normal limits, but they don't necessarily notice the patterns that might show up with someone who's gifted and the big spikes that might show up if they're twice exceptional. And so it's really important to make sure that whoever it is that you're evaluating has a lot of experience with giftedness. And if you suspect twice exceptionality, that they understand a lot of the basic neurodivergencies that might intersect. So as I mentioned, every type of evaluation is going to have its limitations and it's going to have its strengths. And every evaluator is going to have their biases. They just are. We all have biases. And so the important thing to really understand when you are talking with someone who is potentially going to do an evaluation to really ask them about what they see as the limitations of the assessment tools that they use and their own biases, because it's really helpful to understand where their perspective is coming from and what tools they use so that they can understand the potential strengths and challenges of whatever it is that they use and their own biases. So 
Those are just something that is universal, no matter what assessments that you're doing, they're things to consider. So I'm going to talk about four different types of assessment and kind of a combination of all of them. And those types of assessment are diagnostic evaluations, specifically just to get a diagnosis, psychometric evaluations, which are standardized one-on-one -on -one assessments done with a trained professional, qualitative assessments, self-assessments, and multimodal assessments, which combine a variety of those modes. So first of all, diagnostic assessment or evaluations. Obviously, a diagnostic assessment has to be with someone who is trained and has whatever certifications or professional credentials that they need to make a diagnosis. And so for things like ADHD, autism, those sort of things, it's usually someone who is either a psychologist or a medical professional. Some counselors can diagnose certain mental health conditions as well. But the really important thing <laughs> beyond what their credential is, is what their experience is specifically in giftedness and in other areas that you might suspect neurodivergency. So if your primary purpose in a diagnostic evaluation is just to get the diagnosis for either treatment or accommodations, and you're not really that concerned about the insights that they might have or really detailed evaluation, then you can go to a, a doctor or someone who is qualified to prescribe or diagnose, but you want to make sure that they, at the very minimum, understand enough to say that you can't be too smart to have ADHD, or you can't be too social or have too good eye contact to have autism. Those are things that you want to make sure that if you're working with a mental health professional or a doctor and they're making these diagnoses, that they don't have these false notions that people who achieve at a certain level or present at a certain level can't have these diagnoses and that they are looking really at the inner workings and what's going on inside and not just looking at the outside. So the person that gave me my diagnosis was a psychologist through my insurance and they weren't particularly specialized in giftedness, but they definitely acknowledged that you could be both gifted and ADHD. And so getting the diagnosis wasn't a problem. But I have heard many people who have had experiences where they were blown off because they achieved too high or they were too social and that sort of thing. So definitely something to keep in mind. This material in an excerpt from a longer podcast or video. Follow link in description to learn more.